I know a killer when I see one. They set me up when I put my bag in the trunk at the beginning. I like to look in the eyes of killers. There's not many people like that around anymore in the West. So you I, kind of enjoyed it in a way. I mean, Russia's Russia. I got robbed in Moscow. Don't think I've ever told this story. Have I ever told this one? Let me think. Don't think so. I got robbed in Moscow, so. When was it? What happened? And I like Russia, and I like Russians, but it was the first time I went to Moscow. Three years ago, four years ago. So, do I tell this story? Yeah, all right. Everything starts with women, doesn't it? Man, they're such an attack vector. So I'm talking to this chick on Instagram. Blah, blah, blah. I'm ignoring her. She keeps messaging me all the time. Come Russia, come Russia, come Russia. I'm like, no, I'm not coming to Russia. I've got things to do. Then like seven other baddies from Russia start messaging me and everyone wants me to go to Russia. I'm like, why do all these hot girls want me to go to Russia? Why well, everyone wants me to go to Russia? This sounds like a setup. Something right. But I'm glad I can go to Russia. I can't get a visa anyway, it's too much work. Then the football game came. There was some football thing. I think it was a FIFA, I don't know, football, Euro game, something, it was in Moscow. And if you bought a ticket, you instantly got a visa to go to Russia. So I was like, this is the easiest a visa is ever gonna be. Do I go? And then I looked up and I found a game, I think it was like Poland versus Korea or something. It was like six euros, this ticket to this game. <laughs> it's like a six euro Russian visa with no work. Okay, but I'm gonna be on my game because I don't trust this. They're after me, the agents. So I buy this ticket, I get my visa. I fly to Moscow. I booked the Kapinski in advance, the Kapinski Hotel, because I think if I stay in a five-star hotel, I'll be okay. I land at the airport, I've got my bag, I go to walk out, guy in a yellow vest goes, taxi, taxi, I say, yep, taxi. I go to get in the taxi, and he starts walking towards the civilian car park. And this has happened to me a lot of times in Eastern Europe, it happened to me in Moldova, even in Romania it happens sometimes. People pretend to be taxis, but they're not taxis, and they try to take it to their car, and I'm like, no, no, I want an official taxi. Not get in your car. I like, I am a taxi. I was like, no, 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 no. Been around, goodbye. Turned around, started walking back to the taxis. Him and his yellow vest runs up and goes, okay, okay, okay. And he points at this yellow car that says taxi, in the taxi rank, taxi. And he goes, says something to him in Russian, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, okay, here's taxi, sir, taxi. Huge news, years in the making. My brand new book that my publishers refuse to publish, Money Matrix. Beat the money system and build generational wealth. Understand the three main ways that the banks productize you and make money from you. You'll be able to turn that system against itself, build generational wealth and multiple streams of recurring income. It's all at moneymatrix.cash. And if you're quick, the first few hundred registrants and buyers will receive many special bonuses from me. The brand new Money Matrix a summit three-day special event meet me at a champagne reception meet me at a multi-millionaire networking dinner go now moneymatrix.cash this is huge guy gets out the taxi driver taxi driver gets out he's like six foot 130 kilo mongolian looks like a wrestler gets out zangief from yeah exactly <laughs> zangief gets out and because this is how my mind works i look at him up and down and go could i take him be messy I'll be all right, but it'd be messy. So he gets out, he opens the trunk, ushers me to put my bag in the trunk, put my bag in the trunk, close the trunk, get in the back of the car. The car starts driving down the railway in Russia. And he has his phone as the meter, which is the first suspicious thing. And his phone is up there, and, his, and this, this number, Russian rubles, is going through the fucking roof. I'm like, how much is the Russian ruble? I don't even know. So I get my phone out and I turn on the data and I get my text message. Hi, data is 25 pounds a megabyte. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. How much is the Russian ruble? And I worked out that I've been in this car for four minutes and I owe $600 in taxi. So there's no way that's the taxi fare. So we're driving down the highway at speed and I'm like, brother, this is fake. This, this is a scam, bro. And this is the weirdest experience of my life. I've he totally ignored me. But what can you do? He's driving the car. And people don't ignore me when I talk. So this big man's driving the car and I've tapped him on the shoulder saying, you're trying to rob me. I was like, bro, you're trying to rob me, stop the car. And he's just like, just totally ignoring me driving the car. So I'm like, what? I don't want to hit him, but I guess I kind of had to. So I shoved him so the car moved a bit and said, stop the fucking car, I'm not paying this. I don't have the money, I don't have the money. Bro, I've been around long enough. I know a killer when I see one. And he turned around and looked me dead in the eye. This man's killed someone, I swear to God. Because I have that look, so I know when I see it. Takes one to know one. He looks me dead in the eye. 
looks back, gets the phone, dials a number, hands me the phone. Because you guess he doesn't speak English. I hit the phone and say, hello? It's the first guy who tried to take me to the car. He goes, you wanted a taxi. I was like, bro, I don't even have this money on me. So I don't know what you expect to happen because I don't have this money on me. He goes, you wanted a taxi, pay the fare. I said, bro, I can't pay it. I don't have it. Tell him to stop at the nearest gas station. I'll give him the money I have on me and I'll get a real taxi. Hold on. Didn't even answer me, just hung up on me. So I go, what can I do here? If I hit this guy, I guess the car crashes. This other guy isn't answering. They want money I no longer have. So I tapped the guy and I said, okay, 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 I'll pay it. Call your friend again, call your friend. Gives me the phone again. I was like, listen, I had like, I think I had like $4,000 on me. I said, look, I have $500 is all I have. I'll pay the $500 when we get to the end, if you let me out. The guy goes, no, you paid the meter. <laughs> Hung up again. I was like, you fucking cunt. Like, you unbelievable. So I thought I'd be smart. So I emailed, because my phone call wasn't working, so I emailed the Kapinski and said, I'm having a problem with the taxi. Can someone be waiting for me outside the Kapinski Hotel? It's urgent, please. As a, I emailed their info at Kapinski.Russia as a complete random. And I thought they'd never reply in time. They replied instantly, the 20 seconds. Yes, sir, someone be waiting for you, no problem. So I was like, ah, thank God they replied to that. That's great. The concierge can argue, the taxi driver, work all this out. So now I'm just relaxing. I'm kind of chill a bit. And I just had to prod the guy. I was like, do you speak English then? Totally not. I was like, you're friendly. So I'm just talking shit. So anyway, <laughs> we pull up at the hotel. I'm all confident, right? Guy's going to be outside. Did I pull up at the hotel? Nobody's outside. Nobody. No, no concierge, nothing. So I said to the guy, I go to get out the car. I get out the car. The guy then gets out the car. He comes and he stands face to face with me like a boxing stare off shows me the phone of how much I owe him. Must by now, must, I didn't know what it is in rubles, 3,000 American dollars, something ridiculous. I said, bro, I don't have it. He looks at me like he's going to murder me. I don't have it. I said, I have $500, that's all I have. He goes, okay. Using my ninja fingers, my hands, I reach in my pocket and I ninja off like five hundred. Because <laughs> I've got a pile of money like this. So I'm like <laughs> I give it to him. And then the f takes the money, go, and I'm, I'm standing at the back of the car, waiting for him to open the trunk, gets in the car, and starts driving down the road. I'm like, bro, bro, my bag, my bag, my bag. He stops like five meters later and goes, the rest of the money. He knew. <laughs> they set me up when I put my bag in the trunk at the beginning. And my bag's got my laptop, my all my clothes, everything, which is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, if you ever get in a taxi, don't put your bag in the boot. It was a setup. I was like, you fuck. I was like, call your friend. So he calls his friend. I said, listen, I've already given him $500. It's very clever what you did with the bag. It's like, the guy from the Kapinski is about to come out now. I can't give you more than this. We have to come up to something sensible. I said, I can go to a cash point and try and get some more money, but I need my bag. And he goes, okay, 500 more. I said, fine. Hang up the phone. Instantly peeled off 500, didn't bother going to a cash point. And then guy gets back out of the car, and me and him have a Mexican standoff at the back of the car. He opens up the boot. He, go, he, he grabs my bag, I've got the money, and we kind of <laughs> swap them. Just after we've done that, after I paid this fucker $1,000, the guy from the Kapinski walks out. Oh, Mr. Tate, do you need any help? I'm like, yeah, help, yeah, carry my bag. You're useless, it's been 10 minutes. Where have you been? Oh, sorry, Mr. Tate, uh, uh, useless. It's kind of funny because for the, my other four days in Moscow, I had a great time. I love the Russian people. They're very nice. I guess I was unlucky. But every time I left the hotel, there was like a row of taxis, and they all looked like this guy. And they'd all stare at me. And I thought, I'm so glad I paid him, because I guarantee if I got in a fight with that guy, I'd be dead by now. They're just waiting outside the Kapinski, these dudes. And the lesson is, never put your bag in the back of a taxi. That's the lesson for everybody, and that's the story. And I survived, and I had a great time in Moscow. But I'm not going to lie, it did sour things a little bit for me. I was a bit nervous, on edge. And that's how I paid $1,000 for a taxi. Turns out the official rate, which I found out on the way back to the airport, which was booked from the hotel, I think it was like six bucks. <laughs> you go. I got wrecked. But to lose my bag and my luggage was worth so much more. Well, and surely the $1,000, the lesson was worth more than the $1,000. Yeah, I mean, I like to look in the eyes of killers. There's not many people like that around anymore in the West. So you I, kind of enjoyed it in a way. I mean, Russia's Russia. In the West, you don't see that look very often. But um, 
it was a stark reminder of the realities of this world because the realities of the world always boil down to violence. Mm. And I understand that very well. And sometimes you get a little bit comfortable. There are people who walk around through Earth. They're walking around. We're looking, I can look outside right now. There's people walking around and they don't understand that every single thing they rely on and everything they love is backed by violence. It always has been. It always will be. The whole underpinning of a civilized society is violence. The only reason we don't need violence is because there is a threat of violence. And you can nail it down to any law and regulation. As simple as a parking ticket. If you don't pay your parking ticket, they will give you a fine. And if you don't pay the fine, they will take you to court. If you don't go to court, they will take your house. And if you don't give them your house, police will come, kick the shit out of you, throw you in jail. It ends in violence in all things. And it was a good reminder to understand that making a mistake, putting my bag in the back of a car, in the, in the boot, as opposed to keeping it on me, brought me this close to a physical confrontation with probably a Mongolian wrestling champion in the middle of a street in Moscow, by myself. And it's a good reminder that violence is always so close. It's only a few yeah. steps away at all times. And, and, and the reminder that if you have enough money, you can buy yourself out of death. Well, yeah. Because if you hadn't had a thousand, five thousand or been rich, I would have been in a lot of trouble, you, yeah. You could have been dead. I think so. And it was good also to, to see that I felt nerves, but they were the same nerves I felt before I fought. I didn't feel fear, which was a good reminder as well to know that I'm still not afraid. I get, I get nerves because the nerves sharpen me, but I don't feel fear, which was a good thing. Mm. But uh, I still remember his eyes. You, you, I don't think I've ever been looked at like that in the West. And that's another thing that we can tie back into our whole conversation we just had about how certain societies still operate in a certain way and our Western societies are so failed. Maybe I should have told him about LGBT and feminism when he might have let me go. Maybe I should have said, this is, this is bad, this is misogynist. Maybe I should just talk some garbage and he would have let me off. Or is the brutal reality of the world men who are prepared to die for an idea? And his idea was I owed him $6,000 and he was ready to kick the shit out of me for it. And that's the bottom line of all ideas.